Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam, and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies, and today we're going to talk about 18 overlooked movies you can currently catch on Netflix. So this is going to be a list of 18 movies, they're all from a wide range of genres, but they're all overlooked, meaning there's probably a bunch of movies on this list you've never seen or heard of, and they're all well worth watching. Because if you're anything like me, you can spend way more time looking for something to watch, and it's going to take you to watch this video. On that note though, I will tell you about today's sponsor, Likewise, which is this awesome new app I found that is helping me find even more movie recommendations, if you can believe that. And the app is totally free. Free, and not only will Likewise help you find new movies tailored to your taste, they're also going to help you find new shows, books, and even podcasts. Again, Likewise is totally free to download. What you do is create an account, and then you're going to tell Likewise what movies you like, books, podcasts, and Likewise uses a combination of smart technology and recommendations from real people to give you real, actual, good recommendations. Not only that, it'll tell you which streaming service the movie or show is currently available on as you scroll through. You can see comments and discussions from other people in the community about movies and shows. I mean, the app itself has a surprising depth of information the longer you scroll through it, but it has helped me find some things that I either didn't know they were available on streaming or I've never even heard of them. And for the third time, this app is completely free when you use my link in the video description down below. Download it and let Likewise help help you find your new favorite movies, shows, books, and podcasts. But with that, let's move on with this video and talk about some really good movies on Netflix. And the bottom of this list starts off with a banger of an action movie starring Colin Farrell and Numi Rapace in Dead Man Down. Now this is one that I think has been criminally overlooked. It is a little bit dour, it is a little bit slow at times, suffers from some what I'll call mild pacing issues, and it's not full throttle action all the way through. Don't let some of the clips I'm showing you deceive you. This does have some heavy drama elements, but when the action kicks in, it is really wild and exceptional. You also get Terrence Howard playing a really good bad guy in this movie, and not only is Numi Rapace in it, but the director of the original Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, which was her first big claim to fame, actually directed this as well, and it's got a similar mood and aesthetic. Not quite as good, but still pretty solid, especially for one that I know a lot of people have missed. Now my number 17 pick comes from Spain and you can read it with subtitles or there's a very good dubbed version included on Netflix as well. In this movie, a prison transport truck, like an advanced prisoner transport truck, gets derailed, I guess we'll say, he's not on rails, but it becomes stuck out in a remote area during a blizzard and becomes under attack. Now this one reminded me a lot of movies like Assault on Precinct 13. It has a very similar concept and it does deliver. There's some interesting elements with the technology of this big vehicle, but as you get deeper and deeper into this movie, there is more of a story than just like a mindless action movie. There's actually quite a bit of substance with Below Zero that you don't normally get from this genre. It takes a while to get there, but there's plenty of action along the way, especially if you don't mind watching something with subtitles or dubbed. And I've got two more foreign language movies on this list. The next one is Major Grom, The Plague Doctor. Now this is actually an all out action movie from Russia that I think has been criminally overlooked. I will though state that there's some odd elements here and not good odd elements. There's some really bizarre characters that I feel like worked against this movie. However, the main character Major Grom is this detective that is almost superhuman. He's kind of this cartoon character of a detective. And the movie itself is based on a graphic novel series and you can tell, even though some elements don't really work here very well, a lot of them do, making Major Grom well worth watching if you're just even the least bit interested in some of the visuals I've been showing you. My number 15 pick is one of the most interesting documentaries I've seen in a while. If you enjoyed Free Solo, that came out a couple of years ago, I think got nominated or won an Academy Award. The Alpinist should be next on your watch list. 
Now, Alex Honnold, the star of Free Solo, is actually featured in this documentary quite a bit, but this is about one of his favorite climbers. Marc Andre Leclerc was actually this really prolific climber who seemingly had no interest in fame, did not want cameras or anybody really following him, yet he was climbing these infamously difficult rock faces and he was doing it faster than Alex Honnold in some cases. And even though this documentary has to sort of document him at a distance for the most part. He's still one of the more interesting characters I've seen a documentary made on, making this one of the most interesting documentaries I've seen in a while. If you enjoyed Free Solo, whether you're interested in climbing or not, I can tell you The Alpinist is well worth watching. All right, my number 14 pick is a big budget, all out action movie from China that is kind of silly, but also really entertaining to watch. The Wandering Earth takes place in a future where our location in the solar system is no longer working for us, and they create these giant jet engines, basically, on the surface of the Earth in order to steer it out of orbit to a safer home. Think anything where there's asteroids or earthquakes or there's all of that in this movie, and it's wild stuff. A lot of it doesn't quite make sense, but it's a popcorn movie, and for something that's on Netflix that has got a ton of money behind it, the movie looks good, there's a lot of action, even if it's just rubble and stuff flying all over the place, it still makes for a really kind of a cool watch. It's very different. Again, if you haven't really exposed yourself to like these big budget movies that are being done in other parts of the world, they're very similar to American-made movies, but they do have different flavors and things that are well worth checking out if you've got the time. Now, speaking of something with a different flavor, Jason Statham movies typically have kind of the same beat to them. There's a similar theme across most Jason Statham movies. I think we can all agree. However, one that sounds really on brand for him is Redemption, and it is not. So in this movie, he plays his typical self. He's able to clear out a room full of guys with his fists in his feet just about any time, which is not that interesting anymore. But in Redemption, he plays a very interesting character in a role that is pretty par for the course for him. That's why I like this movie. There's some heavy drama elements. His backstory is much heavier than you typically get in a movie, and it comes to the surface much more than you typically get with these types of movies. But don't worry, you still get to watch him beat up a bunch of guys in a chef outfit from time to time. But there is more going on here. So if it's been a while since you've seen a Jason Statham movie you really enjoyed, but you used to really like his movies, Redemption is going to be well worth checking out. Okay, we have not had a horror movie on my list just yet. And while my next one is far from the scariest thing you could watch on Netflix, it is one of the more interesting, smaller horror projects currently on the platform. It's called Sweetheart. Now, don't let the title mislead you. This is about a young woman marooned on a tropical island, yet she may or may not be alone. There might be something or someone out there. This is a slow burn. It's a castaway type of a movie, but it does turn into a horror sci-fi thing. I'm gonna limit my commentary to that so there's no spoilers, but if you typically like horror movies, again, this one's not terrifying, but it's really well directed and has a great concept behind it. Okay, longtime subscribers know I do like to recommend weird movies. My next pick is the one on this list that is not only is not for everybody, it's for the least amount of you watching, so listen closely because this movie is probably not for you, but it might be your new favorite movie. The Killing of a Sacred Deer. This is from the same director as The Lobster, Dogtooth, and The Favorite. I think this might be his best movie. I'm personally a little more partial to The Lobster because it's funnier, but The Killing of a Sacred Deer is a dark movie with some really twisted elements and some very unusual elements. If you like more bizarre, dark movies, The Killing of a Sacred Deer is gonna be right up your alley. I cannot go into too many details because this movie holds a secret and a mystery that is much better if it's just revealed to you midway through the movie. If I tell you about it now, it is going to spoil it. This is not one to watch just because you're a fan of Nicole Kidman and Colin Farrell. And this, again, if you like weird, dark, twisted movies, 
and have not seen The Killing of the Sacred Deer or anything else from this director, I highly recommend checking it out before it's gone. It has been on Netflix for a while. I don't expect it to stick around too much longer. On that note though, Every movie I'm talking about in this video can be found in a list in order in the top pinned comment down below, not the description, but availability is subject to change and will change over time. So make sure you've clicked the subscribe button and the little bell icon. That way you get notified when these videos release so you can catch the movies before they're gone. Now we're on to my top 10 and we're going to start this off with my favorite Scott Atkins movie, Avengement. Now I have mentioned this movie quite a bit on the channel, but it's been well over a year. So I thought it was time to pull it back out for any new subscribers that have yet to get turned on to this movie. Now this has a lot in common with Jason Statham movies. Scott Atkins is a long time stunt performer. He's in a bunch of martial arts movies and he is great at kicking people's ass on screen. Honestly, he's probably pretty good at it in real life too, but Avengement is one of those movies, but it's also kind of like a Guy Ritchie movie. It's really cool. You must be a tough guy then, yeah? Chasing that bloke away all by yourself. It's funny that. You don't look like a tough guy to well, me. What's a fucking tough guy look like then? Well, they look like me, don't they? You know, handsome, well-aged. In it, Scott Adkins plays kind of against type. He's usually this really clean-cut, handsome fella but he plays a gritty, grungy dude with a bunch of silver teeth that is just a total badass. And the story with Avengement is fairly simple, very easy to follow, but interesting and a very different setup. The, the story has a very different structure than this genre typically has, but above all else, it's just a lot of fun to watch him beat up a pub full of gangsters, which is what most of the movie is, and it works. I'm telling you, this is a really fun movie. If you like these types of movies, these ass kicking movies, or, and or, Guy Ritchie flicks, you owe it to yourself to check out Avengement on Netflix. Now, if that's not your bag, but you do like Guy Ritchie, or you at least like gangster movies, but you don't go for all of the action, Legend is a really great option for you. In this movie, Tom Hardy plays the legendary Cray Brothers. Yes, he plays both brothers, and he does a great job. I'm a big fan of Tom Hardy, but I find that in his bigger budget movies, he plays these very quiet characters that don't speak very much, which he does that great, but it's not that interesting to me to see him do that over and over again. However, in Legend, he's playing two characters very different from anything you typically see him do, and he's killing it. This is a great example of seeing his range as an actor and just how good he can actually be. It's totally entertaining to watch him play these two characters, and you get a great gangster flick, and it takes place in the 70s and 80s, so there's an amazing aesthetic to it. It's more colorful than gangster movies typically are, and it's got a great soundtrack as well. So, Legend has a lot going for it. I warn you, I'm not gonna fight fair though. So I brought these. All right. Now before we start, I've got a little joke for you. You love this one. Paranoid schizophrenic who walks into a bar. $112.14. All right, small bills. No, you're overdrawn that much. What does that mean? It means you hit zero. Here's zero. You went below zero. Okay. The first real comedy on this list stars Bill Murray, Melissa McCarthy, and Naomi Watts as a very pregnant stripper in St. Vincent. Now, Bill Murray is the man, and he's always great, but he's particularly good in St. Vincent, and the movie is particularly good because of Bill Murray's performance. Don't get me wrong, everybody else is great in it, but he really carries this thing from the opening frame to the end. In this movie, he plays this really curmudgeoned, I think I'm using that word right, curmudgeoned old man that reluctantly takes a young boy under his wing, and it's a fairly heartwarming story, but it's got a lot of laughs in it. And St. Vincent, to me, is a good example of a movie that's better than the sum of its parts. You've got all these great actors, it's got a good production design to it, the movie looks good, it's well written, but it somehow transcends that just a little bit, and I think that's some of the magic of Bill Murray. He's able to make movies more entertaining by a lot than I think they otherwise would have been. And he doesn't work a ton anymore, but St. Vincent is certainly one of the best movies he's done in the last decade. And then I'll follow up a comedy with probably the darkest movie on this list, The Clove Hitch Killer. In this movie, Dylan McDermott plays an average American father. Awkward talk with dad. 
over. And his son, who is becoming a man, it's got kind of a coming of age thing at times, starts to suspect that his father might actually be the infamous Clove Hitch killer, a serial killer in his area that was never captured. It's dark stuff, it's twisted, and it's a good mystery too. It's hard to tell whether this boy is wrong about his father and making a huge mistake in suspecting his father or if his father is a horrifying serial killer. It's great stuff. In addition to just the great concept and it being a good movie, Dylan McDermott, I think, gives one of the performances of his career and it has largely gone unnoticed and he's doing things in this movie, subtle things that I know a lot of people will miss, but there's some moments in this that really shocked me. Like, I've always liked him, but he really surprised me with what he was able to do as an actor, again, with some really incredible range. If you were ever a fan of his, this one's dark, but I highly recommend it, especially if you're into true crime stuff. This is not a true story, but if you like true crime, The Clove Hitch Killer is gonna be right up your alley. All right, my number six pick is one of the smallest movies, if not the smallest movie on this list, and it's called Small Town Crime. Now in this movie, John Hawks, who's one of my favorite actors, I think you don't get too much better than him in terms of craft. He plays a small town detective who is a drunk, total alcoholic, yet he's trying to solve a mystery. It makes for some good stuff. The setup is very simple. There's nothing too complicated about it. Obviously the story and the plot become complex, but the concept and the type of movie that it is is pretty straightforward. Not only do you get a great role from John Hawks, Robert Forster, this is one of his last roles before he died, Clifton Collins Jr., Anthony Anderson. There's all sorts of great characters that come and go out of this movie and it's filled with a lot of really great moments. The directors of this movie would go on to do Fat Man with Mel Gibson. I consider this to be superior. I recommended that movie, but I consider this to be far superior, which is why I have such a small movie ranked so high on this list. What is that, blood in there? Yeah, it's gonna be extra. Now my number five pick got quite a bit of acclaim a couple years ago when it came out because it is a very good movie, but it was also one of the darkest, heaviest movies to come out that year. The Nightingale is about a young woman in the early 1800s in Tasmania who is hunting down a British soldier for revenge. But unlike a lot of revenge movies, this one's not done in this glorified manner. It's not fun to watch. This is a very heavy movie. It features sexual assault and things that are arguably worse, again, very, very heavy stuff. So don't watch this one on a whim. Make sure you're prepared to watch this one. But the story is incredibly compelling. The filmmaking is top notch. Cinematography is stunning. Acting is, it's just, this movie is hitting on all cylinders. It's just very difficult to stomach. So I do recommend it, but make sure you go into it with the right mindset because it is heavy, but just a solid revenge flick. Easily one of the best to have come out in recent years. All right, now we're gonna jump to easily the weirdest movie on this list, quite possibly the weirdest movie on Netflix right now, Sorry to Bother You. Now, I didn't give you a big warning with Sorry to Bother You because unlike The Killing of a Sacred Deer, it's not so dark that I think it will turn a lot of people off. There's a little bit of darkness, but the weirdness in Sorry to Bother You comes from the fact that Lakeith Stanfield, the character playing the main actor here, is a telemarketer who discovers if he uses a quote unquote white voice, he gets a lot more sales. I'm not talking about Will Smith's wife. I'm talking about the real deal. Like this young blood. Hey, Mr. Kramer, this is Langston from Regal View. I didn't catch you at the wrong time, did I? So that's the setup, but the delivery of it is so incredible. It's really funny to watch. The filmmaking style here is unparalleled, especially when you consider what else is available on Netflix right now, just watching how much fun the filmmakers had with this movie is enough. The concept with the telemarketer and the white voice is even better. And then about the halfway mark, this movie manages to get even weirder. And then about the two thirds mark, it manages to get 10 times weirder. So if that turns you on, Check out Sorry to Bother You. If you do not like really bizarre stuff that I'm telling you is not gonna go in any direction that you could possibly predict, 
Um, this is probably not going to be for you. Now, while my number three pick does go in surprising directions, this is one of the most easily accessible movies, meaning the broadest audience watching me right now is going to enjoy Beirut. Now, normally you call that a crowd pleaser and it's kind of a pejorative. It's kind of a not nice thing to say about a movie. At least filmmakers don't like to hear that their movies are crowd pleasers, but Beirut does it right. In this movie, John Hamm plays a diplomat brought in by the CIA into Beirut to handle some hostage negotiations. Now, as dry as that sounds, this movie feels very real. It feels very much like a true story. In fact, I had to look it up and double check. This is fictional, yet it takes place in Beirut, mostly in the 1980s, at a very volatile time. So the city itself is kind of a character in the movie, but John Hamm is particularly good in this movie. You've also got Roseman Pike and a bunch of longtime character actors that are all doing a great job. The production value is pretty high with this movie. It is solid stuff. If you like political intrigue things, espionage things that are, that are rooted in reality, then Beirut is one of the best things Netflix has added recently. There is another comedy on the list, and just like St. Vincent, it's very funny, but it's also got a lot of heart. And you'll find that quintessential New Zealand brand of humor in The Hunt for the Wilder People. Now this is easily one of my favorite little hidden gems currently included on Netflix. I've loved this movie for years. The director of this, Taika Waititi, would actually go on to direct Thor Ragnarok and Jojo Rabbit, making him one of the hottest directors in Hollywood right now. In fact, looking at his IMDb list, he's got a bunch of projects in production, including the next Thor movie, an untitled Star Wars film, Tower of Terror, and possibly Akira, which has been announced. So we'll see, but the man is on fire right now, and it's largely because of this movie. It is so well done. The storytelling is top notch, the humor is unparalleled, and it's got a lot of heart to it too. It's really fantastic stuff. Easily one of the best movies on Netflix right now that you probably haven't seen. I'm telling you, if you generally like my recommendations and have not seen this movie yet, make it the next movie you watch, trust me. was like the Lord of the Rings. And then one that is probably the most well-known, which is why it's ranked so high on this list, is Gattaca. But I know a lot of people watching never quite sunk their teeth in this one. It's a little bit of a cult movie, or at least it used to be. I feel like time has just forgotten this movie. And it is a fantastic sci-fi flick. Now, it is a little dry, but it takes place in a future where everything is decided for you based on your genetics. The job you're gonna have is decided for you based on your genes. So it's kind of a dystopian Big Brother type thing, but it's done in a very different way than you typically see and the story is really solid stuff. You're not gonna get spaceships and lasers and action and, and explosions with this movie. This movie is kind of a grift of a movie. There's some deception going on, and that's the core of the story, and it's fantastic stuff. You get a great sort of iconic pairing of Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman, who would go on to have children after this movie, and then you also get a really good role from Jude Law. I feel like he's not really known for being in this movie, but he's got a very pivotal role and Gattaca is, not only is it well told, it's beautifully shot. I mean, it came out in 1997. It's honestly a little bit ahead of its time in terms of sci-fi, the aesthetic, and the storytelling, but fantastic stuff, works really well today, easily, far and away, one of the best sci-fi movies currently on Netflix. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any additional recommendations that you have. I do read the comments, and who knows, your recommendation might make it onto a future video. Thanks again to Likewise for sponsoring this video. Again, the link is in the description. It's free to use. I think it's the coolest app of its kind I've ever seen. Even if you get enough movie recommendations from me, you could always use more book and podcast recommendations. But speaking of recommendations, you'll find even more from me at darrenvandam.com. There's a link to my site in the description as well, but I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one.